an honor to be here this morning with you. Acts chapter 1, we're going to begin reading in verse number 8. And I'm going to read it to you out of the message translation this morning. And it says, he told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the father's business. He goes on to say, what, you, what you'll get, what you will get, is you'll get the Holy Spirit. Someone say the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witness. Okay? And we know the rest in Judea, or excuse me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and also to the ends of the earth. We're going to talk about today an outpouring and how important it is for us to get that. Father, I pray today that you would uh, speak through me, God. Use my life. I surrender to you. Uh, have your way. Speak to your people today, God, in a powerful, powerful way. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody together said, Amen. you can go ahead and be seated here uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. Are you guys ready? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want to speak to you today, and I know um, you guys are, are, are talking about and speaking about the power of, of the Holy Spirit being outpoured upon our life. And I want to kind of just uh, piggyback on that a little bit here this morning because it's important for us to realize that we constantly experience the outpouring of the Spirit within our life. Our car needs an oil change every so often. You need coffee. You don't just drink coffee once a month and you're good for the month. Right? Right? Some of us are in that third level coffee habit right now. You're just the cup gets bigger, right? Your cup gets bigger as time goes. And so spiritually, we should also be aware of a fresh outpouring that the Lord wants to bring upon our life daily. Somebody say daily. And so that's why I'm going to need you today to kind of just, you know, I said earlier, I know it's early, but we're going to have some church this morning. I got a simple message for you here today, but if you grab a hold of this simplicity of this message, if you grab a hold of uh, the outpouring of what God wants to bring personally inside of your life, I really believe this morning that you're going to leave here full, you're going to leave here better, it's going to not only uh, better your life personally, but it's going to better those that, that, that you influence and that those that live with you and those that work with you and those that have, have a part of your influence and so here in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, I believe it's such a key verse uh, setting up the book of Acts. And uh, it begins to explain that the power of the church comes from and only comes from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from anything else, but it only comes from the Spirit of God. That's why I like what Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 says. It says, not by might, nor by power. Come on, help me out a little bit this morning. But what? But by your spirit, says the Lord. God's people experienced all of these feelings within Scripture. And every time God was getting ready to pour out a new opportunity, or he was, he was gonna, uh, uh, they were going to come up against an obstacle, he always had to bring a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Every time God was getting ready to do something brand new, Every time God was getting ready to take them through a journey. Every time God was getting ready to open up some new doors and shut some old doors. Every time God was getting ready to take them from level to level to level. There was always a fresh outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit within their lives. I could just give you a few scriptures here this morning. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. The Bible says when the feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Someone say one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force, the message translation says. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Someone say the whole building. Then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread throughout their ranks. I like that. Acts chapter 4 verse 8. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long scripture, but I like what the Bible says. It says, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, began to get loose. Tell your neighbor, get loose. But not, not, too, not too crazy. But I like that. Begin to get loose. Some of us need to get loose. You got you to gotta, you gotta just take a deep one. 
It's okay, man. It's okay. Yeah, all right. Someone say, I'm all right. Yeah, but I like that because it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to just get loose a little bit, man. Like, I thank God for the outpouring of my life. And I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit probably here right now. But my life was boring before the outpouring hit my life. My life was dull. I thought it was live. I thought I was in. I thought I was doing big, big sizzles, as they say. Is that still a word or is that a 90s word? I got saved in 98, so it's still a word to me. <laughs> That's old now, right? I don't know. They got all kinds of different words now. But anyway, you know what I'm saying this morning. My life was dead. It was dull. It was boring. It was monotonous. It was, it was predictable. It was all of that until the power of the Holy Spirit hit my life. Matter of fact, on April 28th, 1998, yesterday was my 20th. Come on, somebody. But it wasn't until the power of the Holy Spirit hit my life that my life, my friend, became brand new. Someone say brand new. And I could speak for you two here this morning. Come on now. We thought, it, we, thought we were somebody before Christ. But when that outpouring hit you, come on, somebody. I felt lifted. I didn't feel scroungy no more. Yeah, they gave me a haircut. I put a suit on. My friend seen me two, two or three days later at court. He goes, you look like a public defender. Yeah. Chucky, Chucky told me that. He didn't know he was going to be in need of a public defender in another year. Yeah. Ordinary people, somebody say ordinary people, are able to do extraordinary things because of the outpouring of the Spirit of God within their lives. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, listen carefully now, my friend, is not a luxury, but is an absolute necessity. It's a necessity. You, you got luxuries in your car. Do I want air? No, they all come with air now, right? I don't. Air or manual or electric or those are all luxuries. And if we're not careful, we have that same mindset about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when it's convenient, I'll take you. When I need you and I need the wind to hit my hair, those seasons of, I'll call you like, like the dove. He's either flying towards your life or he's flying away from your life. But it is not a luxury. The Holy Spirit is not a luxury. It is an absolute necessity in your life. There, come on, get a little excited about that here today. See, people who are self-powered, come on somebody. They try to follow Jesus without the Holy Spirit. They soon start to show signs of becoming overwhelmed by life circumstances. They seem to be following Christ, but then something in life can go wrong and they don't have the power to overcome it. That's why today, my friend, you and I need, and I'm going to say it until, I'm, until the end of this service, you, we need an outpouring upon our life. I'm not talking about a trickle. I'm not talking about a cup. I'm not talking about a pint. I'm not talking about a 40. I'm not talking about a gallon. I'm not talking, a, I'm talking about an outpouring where your life is overflowing with the Holy Spirit, where you are so filled with the Holy Spirit, my friend, that no matter what life throws at you, no matter what season you find yourself in here today, whether you're in a good season or you're in a, a difficult season, you still know that you need the power of the Holy Spirit within your life. Instead of following Christ and sticking close to Him in the storm, many find themselves discouraged and they keep their distance. Sooner or later, they can reach a point where they are frustrated and then comes failure after failure after failure, and if we're not careful, my friend, we go on a downward spiral really quick down, right? People promise they'll change. People promise they'll get better. 
People promise they're going to do this. People promise I won't lose my temper. People promise I won't do that. People promise I won't sin. They keep promising all that, but all they're doing is promising something on their own strength. We're living in a time, Victory Outreach San Diego, where we need the power of the Holy Spirit. My prayer this morning was, God, come on, somebody, 20 years ago, yesterday I was in that home. 20 years ago, my life was unmanageable. 20 years ago, I could not think straight. But then the power of God hit my life in the most simplest way. And I'm going to tell you right now, it changed the course of my destiny forever. Come on, somebody. I honor my pastors. I honor my church. I love them so dearly. I love everybody that has poured out into my life. But I'll tell you one person that I cannot ever not thank, and that's the person of the Holy Spirit. That when he came into my life, not only did he give us the power, come on, somebody, but he changed also our mentality. See, when we try to follow Jesus without the outpouring, we just end up frustrated. And perhaps that's you here this morning. You find yourself frustrated in the house of God. You find yourself maybe exhausted by certain failures or certain efforts that aren't happening. I'm here to tell you this morning, my friend, that by the end of this service, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to hit your life like never before. That's why I'm reminded today of an Old Testament uh, person in uh, First Chronicles chapter 13, and uh, it's pretty pretty uh, popular portion of scripture. Uh, we know that that's when King David went and got the Ark of the Covenant, First Chronicles chapter 13, and it had been missing for a long time. They hadn't had it, but somehow David and the army went and got it back, and the Ark of the Covenant simply represented the presence of God, and they went back, and we know they were on their journey back to Jerusalem, and they had a little, they hit a little speed bump, if you will. And on hitting this speed bump, you know, one of the guys dropped it, caught it, and then the Lord struck him dead, and David got angry. And it's this whole little little scene there. And so they have to make a, a quick decision on what to do with the with the presence of God. And so they go to Obed Edom's house. I like that. That's a pretty cool name. Obed Edom. Say that ten times fast. Obed Edom. Oh, good old Obed Edom. They show up to his house. And what I like about him is his attitude. Yeah, because they showed up unannounced. We don't live in that, in, that, in that culture anymore where you can just show up to someone's house anymore. You can say amen. I'm guilty. You're guilty. All right? We flip out. Who's here? <laughs> Who you expect, who's expecting somebody? <laughs> right, this poor guy the other day knocked, rang our doorbell, opened the door in the, like in the flesh without the outpouring. <laughs> and he was just some guy, some poor little guy that was lost. I go, oh, and then I shut the door. I go, oh, he's, probably, he's probably checking out our house. He's probably, <laughs> probably seeing who lives here. You know how we get. Anyway. Unannounced shows his attitude. Let someone show up to your house unannounced. With your face all mud, mudded up. And Anyway. We just opened the door, yeah? Hey, bro. I'm here for Bible study, right? It's today. Oh, oh, oh. You know, we get real, like, defensive. We don't let anybody, anybody come in. But not Obed-Edom. He, 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 I would like to think that he, he, he opened up that door. Yeah, he was surprised to see David and his army and all these chariots and all these horses. And it was probably a little bit overwhelming for him. But, but at the same time, you know, uh, uh, something sparked inside of him too because, because maybe the condition of his house needed the presence of God. Maybe something was going on in his house that, that, that wasn't normal, it wasn't regular, and he was feeling the absence of the presence of God inside of his home. So when he opened that door unannounced and he seen that they wanted to bring an outpouring into his house, he didn't say, hold up, wait a minute, let me put some... <laughs> Nothing like that. But what did he say? He said, he said, bring it on in. As a matter of fact, if, if the truth were to be told, we need an outpouring in this house. And he said, as a matter of fact, I have a room 
designated for this presence of God inside of my house. And so the Bible says they brought it in. Come on, somebody, and left it there for 90 days. Three months, the presence of God was in that man's house. And if you keep reading that story, man, this guy got super blessed. And I'm going to give you a few simple things here today, what happened to him. But this guy got suit. Why? Because of the outpouring that was in his. See, it's not good enough that we just have it here. Now, it's awesome that we have it here. It's great. We're blessed. Aren't we blessed? Come on. You look blessed. You are so blessed. Yeah? We are blessed. But it's not just to stay here. But we are to take it home with us. And then when an outpouring begins to happen, not only here but at home, we're going to see here, just like it happened to Obed-Edom, God wants to also do it for you. Number one, what I see when he brought the power of God, or we should say this morning, the outpouring to his house, you know what it did? It changed his personal life. Simple. It changed his personal life. That means a whole lot. That's a mouthful this morning. Because, because some of us, come on somebody, we're limiting the outpouring to, to areas that, that, that are obvious, that need it. But today, let's start with us in our personal life. And that's what happened to Obed-Edom. He began to have his personal life changed. I believe, yes, there was some, there was some uh, physical blessings that came to his house. Yes, I believe that there was obvious blessings that came to his house. Stay with me now this morning. Yes, I believe he might have had a flat screen smart TV in his living room and in his kids' room and in his den and everywhere. Yes, I believe his uh, chariot, come on somebody, had gotten some rims on it and some spinners on it. Yes, I believe he had a camel with not only one hump, but two hump. Yeah, I believe he paid it off. Come on somebody. Yeah, I believe he had all these blessings that were going on within his life, but, but let's not let the physical blessings get in the way of the spiritual blessings that God wanted to bring into his life. See, blessed doesn't mean perfect. It simply means joy regardless of circumstances. Blessed doesn't always, it, it, it means peace regardless of chaos. It, 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 it may not always, you may not always have what you want, but you know where I'm going with this. You have everything you need. You better say amen today to that. But you know what happened is he started noticing his personal life was changing too. That he was actually changing. That God was bringing change upon his life. That God was showing him. See, when you have an outpouring, and I have an outpouring, and we have an outpouring, my friend, we'll begin to see change even within our own lives. Because we want to see everyone else change, right? You can think of five people right now that need to change. <laughs> See, without the power of God in our lives, my friend, we will be living under our own power. We will just be living under our own power. But what I love about Obed-Edom is that he was not satisfied. He began to allow the power of the Holy Spirit deal with his life. I don't want to have church without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Too many Christians, my friend, are satisfied without the power of God in their lives. We speak of spiritual things. We sound spiritual. We look spiritual. Come on, somebody. But that doesn't mean that we are experiencing the power of God in our life. Mm -mm -mm. Another thing I see here this morning is the power of God or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit changed his priorities. Mm -mm -mm. Someone say priorities. It changed his priorities. When you look at this scripture, eventually David came back to get the ark. And when he came back to get the ark, um, I could imagine he didn't want to. He didn't want to let that thing go. But 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 he began to look and recruit different people that were going to help him uh, run uh, David's. Uh, army and David came in looking and David was looking and he came to get the presence but he didn't come just to get the presence he began to recruit 
And he began to ask. And Obed-Edom said, it has affected my personal life. And not only has it affected my life, but my priorities are different now. Where my priorities weren't for the house of God before. My priorities were just for my house. But now that I've experienced this outpouring within my life, come on somebody, now my priorities are shifting a little bit. Now it's not all about my house. Now it's not all about my life. But now it's about helping out God's house. And, and I believe that he began to, I guess you can say, he began to uh, bring his own children into David's presence. And he began to say, David, if you need singers, guess what? I got some singers in my house. You need gatekeepers? Because if you look at Obed-Edom's life, he became a doorkeeper. He became a head usher. Yeah, don't minimize that. He became a head usher. He began to have a house, a heart for the house. His kids not only began to serve in the church, not only did they begin to sing in the church, but his hands went up every time there was a need within the house. He began to eventually, come on somebody, have his priorities changed. What am I saying here today? I think it's simple. Yeah? That when there is an outpouring upon our life, your priorities will begin to change. He totally allowed the power of God to change him to the point that his priority was on worship of God and nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else mattered than to begin to worship God. Nothing else mattered. Come on, somebody. Than, than to begin to put his priorities on the power of God. He also experienced the power of God that there was nothing that was asked of him that he was unwilling to do. you got to help me out a little bit this morning. That there was nothing that he wasn't willing to do. Sometimes it's just little things. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit in your life and your priorities are changing, and I know they are, the Holy Spirit began to deal with you. It's like he's probably dealing with some of us here today. He's been dealing with you. He's been trying to prompt you to do something. For some of us, it's just coming to church. I got to just come to church. Come on, somebody. I got to be faithful to the house of God. Yeah? I don't want to just show up for church. Come on now. But I want to, I want to, I want to like show up. I don't want to just come in all quiet and, you know, at first you do, you know, you just, mm, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You get to meet a few people. Praise God. Right. Amen. Praying for you. Praying for me. Oh, I love it. You get all this attention. Right. You get gifts. You get free coffee. You get, you know, all this stuff. Hugs. You're broken. People are loving you. And then you start experiencing the power of God and the outpouring upon your life. And there's just no way that you could experience the outpouring within your life without somehow getting a little bit more bolder within your walk with God. And now you don't just come to church to occupy a chair, but now you're showing up to church. You ever see those people? You ever see those people? They just they walk in and all of a sudden they're like, hi. And then you're like, what happened to them? I'll tell you what happened to them. The outpouring has been hitting their life. So now it's changing them. Come on, somebody. Now they're getting bolder. And now they're, they're getting better. And now they're speaking life. And now, and now their family's getting saved. And now this is happening within their life. And now that is changing in them. And now they got a raise. And they're blessed. And they're, they're coming to church. But they're just not coming. And now they're, they were at one time just standing there. And they were looking angry and sorrowful and, and pitiful and just lemony and just sad face and always feeling frustrated and always feeling this and always feeling angry and feeling mad and emojis said it all but then the outpouring hit their life and the outpouring of God began to and it happened right before your eyes and you can't explain it they can't explain it all they can say was what, what, what was the power of God that hit their life 
Come on, somebody. There is no way you and I could serve God on our own strength. None of us is that good. You think, we think sometimes. Oh. But no, 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 no. Don't you, don't get it twisted, my friend. Don't you dare get it twisted thinking you could counsel somebody in the flesh. Don't think you could counsel somebody without the Spirit of God and without the Word of God and without the outpouring upon your life. If you do that and if you've done that, come on, somebody. We need to repent and get back to the power of God within our lives because it'll change your priorities. Come on, somebody. The house of God will begin to be valued. Now, I know you're the 830. I get it. We're here. We're faithful. Preaching to the choir, you know, I'm here, aren't I? I'm here early. Like, come on, man, move on already. But, but there just might be one person in here. That somehow, some way, if we're not careful, we can, we, can, we can lose, like, the value. The value of what we're doing here. It's, it should never be a task it should never be an obligation. It should never be, you know, I'm showing up just so that, you know, I don't get 10 texts after church. People, all that, you know. Like, no, I don't want, I'm here because I value, the, I value the house. This is where you'll get the outpouring. Now, the outpouring can hit you in your car. It can hit you at home. You can hear it here on the Internet. We get it. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing. I've been home listening to it. Come on, somebody. It doesn't, it, it's cool. I mean, it, it eases the guilt. <laughs> hey, at least I was online. And if you're online, God bless you today. Some are, are, are home validly. We get it. But come on. There's nothing like being live, all the way live in the house of God. Coming in. Come on, somebody. Just coming in and occupying a chair and lifting up your hands and listening to the music and hearing Brother Gerald and the team and, and, and everybody up here. Come on, somebody, right? Rubbing shoulders and praying for people and fellowshipping. You ain't hearing me today. That's why I'm saying the priorities. That's what happened with Obed-Edom. His priorities changed. Come on, somebody. Look where he was. He was at home when it came. But then when it wanted to leave, he went with it. I believe he went with it. I believe he, he, he took his whole family. They had their bags packed. They had everything going. Like, if, when this thing leaves, we're out. And if you look at his life, which brings me to my last point, it, 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 it not only changed changed him personally and changed his priorities, but it also changed his family. I told you it was simple, but it changed his family. I like that. He became, like I mentioned, a gatekeeper. Uh, we keep reading it in chapter 26 and in verse 8. He had 62 descendants that followed in his footsteps. Uh, we can sometimes feel overwhelmed when our family members are not Christians. Talk to me a little bit this morning. But, it's only allowed, but, but, but it'll only happen when there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life and on my life uh, to flow through us and, and to change us. And if it changes us, then it's going to change. Let me just say this. You know, man, I want my family saved too. It was promised to me years ago when I first got saved. Uh, Evangelist Dick Mills told the whole section over here, and I was there sitting in that section. He goes, this whole section over here, your promise is Acts 16.31, that if you get saved, your entire family will get saved. Yeah, and I took that to heart. And little by little, I have seen it. I have seen it unfold. My, my daughter has gotten saved. My, my children are all serving the Lord. And my mom. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, you feel like you're the only one clapping? No, my mom got saved. Like, that was huge. Like, everyone knew I needed God. But my mom, come on, good old little sister Linda, that had a, a son that was a drug addict, that had a husband that was a drug addict, that 
had uh, brothers and sisters that were drug addicts, but, but never her. She kept it together. She was the glue that kept it together. But yet still, she needed a Savior just as much as I needed a Savior. And when I went to that altar that, that, that 20 years ago, my friend, her and I made the same altar call to give our life to Christ. So it's not impossible. If you experience the outpouring of God, let me tell you right now, God is not just coming for you. God is not just coming for your, your marriage, but God is coming for your entire family. And old Ben Edom not only experienced the outpouring of God in his own life, but he experienced in his family. His entire family was in the house of God. And if you want your entire family in the house of God, you better stand up. You better clap your hands. You better give the Lord a good shout because if God could save you and if God could save me, then there is no reason that he cannot save them. I know it looks, it looks, it looks dark. I know it, look, it looks impossible. I know it looks out of reach. I know it looks like it's not going to happen, but I'm here to encourage you here today. Don't look at them through your eyes. If you're praying for your son and he's arrested, that's an answer to prayer. Okay, two claps. That was probably two, that was probably two sons that got arrested. I was one of those sons that got arrested. That was an answer to prayer. Yeah? You may have a daughter today. Yeah, that seems far from God. It doesn't seem like it's getting any better. Matter of fact, it looks like it's gotten a lot more worse. But I'm here to tell you this morning, you allow the Holy Spirit to pour out his power upon you. Old Testament was around. New Testament, we have it within. And we have it in us to believe God. For our families. I could share just testimony of, of my own child. He's 25 now. He came to live with Pastor Tim and, and Sister Jen for, for a year, right? Was it a year? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Man. Church kid. Grew up in the ministry since the age of five. And I found myself pioneering a church there in, there in, there in Fremont. And um, she got off track, and she got off track fast. And she was doing things that we, we you know, could only imagine. And one day, because I, I, I said, God, you promised me. You promised me. Like, you, you God, you promised me that you were going to save my family. And, and so I'm just reminding you. And God said, yeah, you, I'm, I'm reminding you. And I remember one day getting that phone call. And, man, she was broken and she was, I thought obviously something went wrong. And she said, no, 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 Dad, nothing. I'm good. I'm, I'm on the side of the road right now. And she began to tell me that God spoke to me. Like, what? So, yeah, God spoke to me. Like, oh, this is getting interesting fast right here. <laughs> yeah. And she said, he told me that I need to go to the UTC. Yeah. yeah. I said, okay. But, you know, I was like, okay, great. And then we started talking, and then I said, like, which, which one? And then at that time, the, the, I guess the furthest one was, was in the East Coast. She said, I got to go there, and the rest is history. Somebody came up that, that, that two days later, Pastor Al, I was in church, and I, I voiced it. She's going to the training center. I didn't have the money. I didn't have anything, nothing. I didn't say that, though. But I said, she's going to the UTC, and somebody in the church was a retired Oakland police officer, knew our story, knew that we were struggling, and knew where we were. And he said, the Spirit of God spoke to him. And he came up to me and shook my hand. But he didn't just shake my hand, baby. There was something in between. And 
I said, oh. And he went. He didn't say much. He just went. You know those ones? Like sometimes they'll give it to you and just be like. But this dude, he went, he looked, he goes. <laughs> it was like something special about that one. And so, you know, I did what any normal person that gets a Pentecostal handshake like that I went straight to the bathroom. <laughs> move, watch out, watch out, watch, move out, get out of my way, watch out. I did the George Jefferson real quick. <laughs> and I opened up that check. And that check was the full tuition to the T, to the, to the T. He didn't know. He didn't know. I didn't voice it. I didn't ask. I didn't, you know, hey, guys. I didn't play that because I had a promise. And God gave me a word. And I was, I was, I was, I had an outpouring on my life. And I, and I had that God was outpouring even in my, even in my challenges and even, in my struggles, it was, there was still an outpouring that was happening in my life. And, and even though it, 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 I, I was walking by faith and not by sight, but there was still, I was still getting a hold of God and I was still praying to God. And while she wasn't coming home at night, I was still praying to God. I was still, I was still getting a hold of God. And I said, God, I can't do it on my own. I, I can't raise her on my own. She's not listening to me. Somehow, some way, you got to do it for her. And God said, I have a plan that is in motion. There is an outpouring that is not only coming to you, but it's coming to your children, and it's coming to the house. All you got to do is put yourself in the atmosphere where the outpouring is going to happen. Come on, lift up those hands. There's an outpouring that's going to happen.